what if the evidence we are looking for is not out there, but has in fact already arrived? For decades, my colleagues in the scientific establishment have operated under the assumption that we are alone, or that the vast distances of space are simply too large to overcome. Yet, recent data suggests a sobering statistic, over 99% of all interstellar objects, visitors from other star systems, pass through our own solar system completely undetected. Now, something strange has just happened in our solar system. Something so powerful that NASA's instruments, our most sophisticated eyes on the sun went dark for almost a full minute. The culprit, an interstellar object known as 3, I divided by Atlas. The mysterious visitor from beyond our solar system just released a burst of radiation so intense it temporarily blinded sensors across multiple observatories. This was not just a flare, it was not a reflection, it was a, a focused, measurable burst of high energy particles. And for reasons no one yet understands, for reasons that challenge our current models, it appeared to be directed. Uh, NASA has not said much since the data came in. In fact, they have gone almost completely silent. This silence is in itself a data point. In science, we must follow the evidence, not the consensus. And silence from our major institutions often means the data does not fit the accepted narrative. Now, let's rewind. Just a few weeks ago, 3 I divided by Atlas was observed crossing the inner solar system, glowing faintly green as it approached the orbit of Mercury. Astronomers assumed it was behaving like any other interstellar comet, releasing gas and dust as it neared the Sun. This is the comfort zone of astrophysics attributing anomalies to ice and dust. But then something changed. Its glow began to pulse slowly at first, then rhythmically, almost as if responding to something unseen. Telescopes in Hawaii, Chile, and orbiting satellites all picked up the same anomaly, a pattern in the light signature, too structured to be random. This is precisely where we must be brave as scientists. When nature presents structured data, we cannot dismiss it as mere coincidence. And then, two days ago, NASA's Parker Solar Probe and the Solar Dynamics Observatory detected something extraordinary. A sudden sharp spike in gamma and ultraviolet radiation emanating directly from the vicinity of 3 I divided by Atlas. For 47 seconds, the instruments recorded a surge that outshone even the background solar noise. It was not solar activity, the sun was calm, the burst came from deep space, from the object itself. To put this in perspective, this was not like sunlight glinting off metal. This was pure energy released in a wavelength that suggests high energy ionization, something usually found in pulsars or artificial accelerators. Yet, here it was near Mercury's orbit, coming from an object the size of a small mountain. This anomaly is exactly what we should be looking for when an object defies categorization, we must resist the urge to force it into one. Uh, NASA scientists immediately began coordinating with the European Space Agency and Harvard's astrophysics team. Within hours, they had ruled out the usual explanations. No solar flare interference, no instrument malfunction, no known background burst from distant quasars, Every trace pointed back to three, I divided by Atlas. Uh, but when NASA released a brief public statement calling it a localized radiation event, the data log suddenly stopped updating. Observatories that had live telemetry feeds were cut off. For many researchers watching in real time, it felt like someone pulled the plug. And that silence, that hesitation, is fueling one question that's echoing through the scientific community. What exactly did 3 I divided by Atlas just do? Let's imagine this for a moment. Out there, a cold interstellar body drifting for millions of years between stars suddenly enters our system and releases energy powerful enough to disrupt solar observatories. What could trigger that? Was it the sun's magnetic field or something built into the object itself? Some researchers now believe that 3 
I divided by Atlas is not behaving like a comet at all. Its composition, measured by spectral analysis, does not match any known chemical signature in our solar system. It reflects light unevenly, like a surface that is layered metallic in places and porous in others. This is a crucial detail. Natural objects, sculpted by eons of random erosion in space, tend toward uniformity. This object exhibits complexity. When you combine that with its stability near the Sun, it begins to resemble not a natural body, but something designed perhaps to endure heat, radiation, and deep space travel. Now, here's where things get even more intriguing. In the moments before the radiation burst, several instruments detected a sudden drop in the local magnetic field. It was as though three I divided by Atlas absorbed energy, built up a charge, and then released it. One NASA physicist compared it to a capacitor, a device that stores energy and releases it in a pulse. But if that is true, how could a natural rock from deep space behave like advanced technology? The establishment would say it shouldn't be possible. Yet, here we are, staring at data that says otherwise. For those of you who remember the 1970s, when the Pioneer and Voyager probes first ventured into interstellar space, this must feel strangely familiar. Back then, humanity sent out its first messages to the stars, like golden records containing music, images, and the sound of human life. Perhaps three, I divided by Atlas, is the universe returning the gesture, a signal not of words or music, but of energy, a universal language older than sound. NASA's radiation specialists believe the burst carried a distinct frequency pattern. When they plotted it on a graph, they noticed a sequence, not random noise, but repeating intervals almost like a digital pulse train, the intervals follow the ratio similar to hydrogen's spectral emission line, the most fundamental signal in the universe. Was it coincidence or was it intentional? We must not be afraid to ask this question. Uh, Harvard's team, working quietly under project codename Solnet, began decoding the pulse as if it were a message. And according to a leaked memo, they discovered something remarkable. The intervals correspond to the Fibonacci sequence, a mathematical pattern that appears in nature from the spirals of galaxies to the structure of DNA. If that is true, then the radiation burst was not chaos. It was order. And order in the heart of the void always implies intelligence. Now, before we jump to conclusions, um, it is important to note no one is saying 3i divided by Atlas is an alien ship. That term is loaded with cultural baggage. But there is growing speculation, based on the data, that it could be a probe, not unlike what we might one day send to another star system. Imagine a device designed to survive eons, to awaken when it senses light from a nearby star, to scan, analyze, and transmit what it finds. Could 3i divided by Atlas be one of these? Could it have activated as it approached the sun, releasing that burst of radiation as a kind of beacon, a signal home? If so, that changes everything we thought we knew about our place in the cosmos. NASA's silence might not be a cover-up, but a reflection of shock. Imagine standing at the edge of a cosmic doorway and realizing for the first time that someone or something might be standing on the other side. For many older viewers, this evokes a deep sense of wonder. You remember the awe of the Apollo era, when humanity first looked back at Earth and realized how fragile, how small we are. You remember when Voyager turned its camera toward the pale blue dot, showing our entire world as a single pixel in the infinite dark. That moment changed how we saw ourselves. And now, half a century later, 3i divided by Atlas might be doing it again not through images, but through a message written in radiation and light. Let's step back and think about what this could mean scientifically. A burst of radiation like that requires an immense amount of stored energy, far beyond chemical reactions. It would need advanced physics, controlled magnetic compression, 
plasma containment, or even quantum resonance. That is technology we are only beginning to dream of. Yet, this object drifting silently through space just demonstrated it. One fascinating hypothesis suggests that 3i divided by atlas might be composed of exotic materials, superconducting minerals capable of channeling energy with almost no resistance. Such materials could act like antennas or resonators, storing and releasing cosmic energy. This is not impossible. We have found meteorites on Earth containing rare elements forged in supernova explosions. 3, I divided by Atlas, might simply be an evolved form of cosmic matter, one capable of behaviors that mimic technology. But what if that is not mimicry? What if it is technology? just one that nature itself designed. This is a philosophical bridge we must be willing to cross. Perhaps intelligence in the universe does not always look like machines or flesh and bone. Maybe it exists as self-organizing matter, alive through magnetism, memory and motion. What if 3, I divided by Atlas, is not a visitor from another civilization, but a product of the universe itself, a conscious fragment of cosmic evolution? Uh, NASA's data shows that after the burst, 3i divided by Atlas's speed changed slightly. It accelerated not by much, but enough to raise eyebrows. This is highly reminiscent of the Oumuamua anomaly. Uh, natural outgassing can cause comets to shift course, but this was different. The direction of acceleration was not random. It was aligned precisely with the Sun's magnetic axis. It is as if the object used the burst to adjust its trajectory deliberately, like a ship trimming its sails in a solar wind. Meanwhile, instruments on Earth detected faint ripples in our own magnetosphere, roughly 20 minutes after the event. A correlation, possibly, but if it is real, it suggests that whatever three I divided by Atlas emitted had an influence across tens of millions of miles. That kind of energy transfer would require understanding physics far beyond our current reach. And that is where the philosophical question arises, one that echoes through every observatory, every late night lab discussion, every person staring up at the stars tonight. Are we witnessing the work of a natural phenomenon or the legacy of intelligence beyond our own? If 3, I divided by Atlas, is artificial, it could mean we are not alone, not in the universe, not even in our own solar system. It could mean that across the galaxy, countless civilizations have been sending out these objects, silent, patient messengers, waiting for others like us to evolve enough to notice. And perhaps now that we finally have, one of them has answered, but if it is natural, the truth is no less profound, because it means the universe itself is capable of behaviors that mimic consciousness. It means the boundary between life and physics is thinner than we ever imagined. NASA may be silent, but the cosmos is not. Every telescope still points toward that faint glowing traveler, now moving farther from the sun, trailing behind it a thin mist of ionized particles, like smoke after fire. Scientists are waiting for another pulse, another clue, because somewhere within that object lies a truth about where we come from and possibly uh, where we are going. For now, all we can do is watch and wonder and calculate, because at the edge of science and imagination lies a single possibility that we have just witnessed the universe trying to speak. The most valuable lesson here is not about aliens, it is about humility. For centuries, we have placed ourselves at the center of the cosmos, assuming our intelligence is the only intelligence, but the universe is not obligated to conform to our expectations. This object, 3, I divided by Atlas, whether it is natural or artificial, demands that we abandon our arrogance it teaches us that the highest form of intelligence is the willingness to be proven wrong, to follow the data, no matter how uncomfortable the destination. We must look at the sky, not as a mirror reflecting ourselves, but as a window to possibilities we have not yet dared to imagine. 
So I ask you, what do you think NASA found in that burst of radiation? Was this nature showing us something new? Or was it perhaps a technological signature? Let me know your hypothesis in the comments below. And if this pursuit of evidence, this grand cosmic search, fills you with the same sense of awe that it brings me, make sure to subscribe to this channel. We must continue this conversation because one day soon, we may discover that we were never just observers of the universe. We were always part of its grand conversation. And tonight, perhaps for the first time, the universe just spoke.